it's only up to you whether or not you're going to make it work. It's interesting that we like to make things work with other people, but we don't like to make them work for ourselves. I don't know. That's just an interesting data point. Anyways, hello angels. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, today we have a sit down video, taking a little pause from the Rover rants. And when I say pause, I mean like very, very brief pause. It's just, it got too late for me to film this, like I guess in my car. So I'm filming it from my room and also not my studio. So just a quick update. You guys should know I do have a studio that I was able to build, which is like my office slash filming type of production room. And I'm super excited to be filming from there. And we have a lot of good things that are in store. So make sure you guys are keeping up with me on Instagram. And also before we even start the video, make sure that you give the video a thumbs up and that you share it with a friend, because I think that it is so important that we grow the A-team and we want to share this news because we are not gatekeepers on this channel. As you guys can see from the title, we're going to be talking about detachment. Now I made a video about this a couple years ago. I think I've done it like in multiple forms, but it is so important to talk about because on my podcast, actually, I talked about attachment styles. So these two videos kind of correspond with each other where I'm just going to be talking about what exactly detachment is and give you guys a little bit of tips on how to actually do it. So Number one, what actually is detachment? And detachment is basically letting go of any intrusive thoughts and analysis paralysis and just being aware and cautious of what you're pouring your energy into and building those boundaries at the same time in order to maintain and preserve your mental health. So by setting clear boundaries in your relationships, okay, both romantic and platonic, you can avoid the feelings of stress, of anger, of uh, resentment, of disappointment. And these feelings often arise whenever your boundaries are eroded at or they are pushed away or ignored, right? That's when you're going to start to experience these types of things. So this basically means when you are detaching from something that you should take a step back and evaluate how whatever relationship you're going through is affecting your mental health. This is so crucial because I personally feel like in my own life, there have been times where I felt like, oh my gosh, like I'm saying that I can do this, but I don't necessarily have the time to do it. And I'm kind of begrudgingly performing a task that I really don't want to do. And I'm sure that many of us can relate to this. It's just simply because we kind of want to have time for everything, even though we genuinely may not be able to. So as I gotten older, I started to realize I want my yes to be yes. And I want my no to be no. And I get it. When you're in a romantic dynamic, you want to detach from a guy. It's so hard to act like everything you're going through doesn't bother you. It is so difficult to feel like you're pretending like you don't care when, especially when he done did you wrong. Huh? Let's talk about that. How do you detach from something? You want, you see red. All you want to do is just get him back. You want to make that person feel exactly how you feel, but that's just not how the cookie crumbles. You know why? Because I've always said things like this. You cannot force someone to care about you. You can't force someone to miss you. You can't force someone to want to be in your life. It will not happen. So all your efforts thinking that you're getting somewhere by trying to be vindictive to somebody, imagine doing all the things you're doing and that person still doesn't care. And a lot of the times that's what happens. So as women, we hop on social media, <laughs> get if he wanted to, he would. And you, next thing you know, this guy's looking at your stuff and he's not even caring. Because this is the thing we as women have to understand. Guys are not thinking at all the way that we're thinking because we are more emotional, they are more logical. To them, logistically, they can completely be so detached from whatever it is that you're saying that it almost feels like it doesn't even apply to them literally at all. They don't care. They have no attachment toward it. So if you want to be petty, that's fine. But the only person that looks like a clown really is you. When the next fight, the end of the week, he hits you up, where you at? And you're like, um, I don't, I, I mean, like, I'm home. Like if you, I mean, if you wanted to pick me up, you can <laughs> like, what? like, no, like you have to have 
boundaries. You have to have boundaries in your friendships when your friends want you to be the life of the party. Hey, hey girl, can you come here? Oh my God, I would love it if you came to this thing. Or you're saying, oh, I'm just going to stay in for tonight. And then you're feeling so anxious because you're attached to what are they going to think of me if I don't show up? What are they going to say about me to the rest of our friend group if I don't go to this event or I said I was going to go just because I felt pressure to go. All of this is just a lack of boundaries. Whatever you have done in your life, think about it like this. Whatever you have done in your life has brought you to this exact moment right here and right now. Are you happy? Because you want to be very solution-based as it pertains to detachment and thinking about different outcomes and things of that nature. Because how can you detach from something when you're constantly chasing it? You have to pour into yourself. All of the energy that we pour into other people, what would life look like if we were to pour that back into ourselves? You can't control other people. You cannot force people to do the things you want. You can suggest, you can do all these things. We've all done it. We all want what's best for the people that we love and that we care about, but you really can't force outcomes. Every time you try and change someone, consider how hard it is to change yourself. Can you change, you know, your favorite color? You ever try and convince someone to love uh, baby pink? Okay. We like what we like. I want you also to focus on your experience with people rather than the outcomes. A lot of the times we get into dynamics and let's be real here, ladies, we're focused on what does this mean? Where's this going? Da, da, da. And I get it. Like, but the younger you are, and I'm not even trying to be pessimistic, but the younger you are, the harder I think it is because you don't have all the, you know, the wisdom yet. You're still in that experimental phase of trying to figure out what it is that you want in life. Right. And trying to, you're all of the things that you go through are just like data collection of like, okay, is this the right guy for me? What will I, will I not tolerate things of that nature? It's these things are all happening to you all at once. And I completely understand that. But really try your best to focus on the experience rather than the outcome, because that way you're putting less pressure on yourself to being attached to this to a certain outcome, because that's how we set ourselves up for disappointment. If you're over here thinking that we're going to end up together and this is what I want, you're not wrong for, for thinking that, for desiring that. But if you're thinking, okay, we're going to definitely end up together. And this guy, who even knows what he's really thinking? So you're thinking that, well, he's going to be on what I'm on. That's not always usually the case. So you have to just say, all right, what is this experience teaching me? What am I learning? What are the data points here? And I understand when you like somebody, it is so hard. It is so hard. I'm not even going to sit here behind the screen and pretend like it's not because it is really hard when you like somebody and you want to see them all the time and you just want to talk to them and you really just, if you're, you know, not around them, you, you're like, are they thinking of me? Like, oh my gosh. Like, and if things don't end up the way that you want it to end up, you feel like you wasted your time. Like all of these different, these influx of emotions start to surge through you. And I completely understand that. This is why we have to learn when to let go. This is a part of detachment. It's when you're obsessing. You know, when you find yourself in an obsessive dynamic, you will find yourself in an obsessive dynamic when one party likes the other more, okay? And these types of inconsistent, consistent dynamics are very intoxicating because you have this guy, one minute he's showering you with affection, the next minute he's breadcrumbing you on Instagram and he's barely talking to you. He's like, you know, basically sexting you on Snapchat and you're just so hungry for any like admiration from this person. Like I told you guys, science shows that whenever we like someone and we find them attractive, we tend to attribute all good qualities to that individual. When there's someone that we are not attracted to, it's easier for us to associate negative qualities with that person. So with that being said, that tells us that it's easy to turn our blinders on when we like somebody and we're super attracted to them. It's a little bit difficult to be more logical, especially because it is not necessarily mm, second nature for us women. Now, I want you guys to also figure out what is the reason that you want to detach from this outcome? I want you to focus on that. Focus on the progressive issue rather than the one-off issues. Because our brain loves to minimize things, especially at times, you know, for our comfort and our delusion. 
our brain will feed us and feed into the delusion, feed into the lies. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, you guys have been hanging out for a year. You Like, this is what I'm saying, ladies. This is why learning to detach is so important. It's like, I love the saying, I'm attached to nothing, but I'm connected to everything because it allows me to feel like I'm enjoying the experience. But hey, if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, doesn't. You cannot control people. I'm going to say it again. You can barely control yourself. So why do you think you can control people? Think about that. You cannot force any outcome on someone. So if you're trying to force a guy to really like you and you're trying to you're trying to pretend like oh I don't really care and then you're telling yourself over here oh it doesn't really matter what he's doing but you're checking on his social media every single day like no you're bothered and some things that's also be real will always be a sensitive subject so you have to be careful why are you triggering yourself you really like that don't you hmm <laughs> that's very interesting to me back to what I was saying our brains are built for, you know, we're hardwired as human beings to have maximum pleasure, minimum discomfort, <laughs> right? So with that being said, yeah, when you're looking back, you're going to start to call out all the most minimal things about the person instead of what the progressive issues are, not the one-off issues, what the progressive issues are. What got you to that to this point that you're in right, you know, that you're at right now? What events have transpired over time that have led you to this conclusion? Because it is not the fact that he did not call you last week. It is not the fact that you asked him to go to breakfast with you and you've requested to go out with him in the daytime multiple times and he just kind of says, okay, we'll do it and doesn't do it. No, 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 no. It goes beyond that. What are the progressive issues? Uh, let's see. And this is, when it comes to detaching, you got to be honest with yourself. Don't, don't lie to me all you want. Stop lying to yourself. That's the problem. Okay. That's your problem. You keep lying to yourself. The reality of the situation is any man that really wants you. Oh, I promise you. I promise you. It's not going to make you question whether or not he wants you. Oh, I promise you. Cause let me tell you something. Let me give you a little, huh? T when you guys were first talking, right? Was he not all in your business? Was he not calling you every day. Good morning, beautiful. Every morning. And then one day he woke up. What happened? He all of a sudden lost interest. If he loses interest, let him. Because if it's that fragile, then baby, let it break. If it's that fragile, then let it break. That's my logic. Huh. It, you wasn't for me anyways. It wasn't for me anyway. So I'm over it. That's what we have to get to. I think so many times as women, the reason why we're so attached to the outcome is because one, we don't want to, you know, give our money to someone else, which is why you should mm -hmm, lock it up. You don't want to start over with another person, probably for the, the you know, the, pre the previous reason that I listed. You also really like this guy. You want to make it work. Anything you have to force, it's not sustainable. That goes for me. And that goes for you too. Anything you have to force isn't sustainable. And do I believe that people change? I do. And I say that with the utmost genuine honesty. I think that's the beauty of life is that people do change and they do change for the better. But at the end of the day, either he wants you or he doesn't want you. And you have to let whatever version you've cured, curated up in your head, because this is the dangerous part of society. Where we're at in society right now is that these dynamics um, are getting progressively worse as it pertains to situationships where people are able to carry on these types of dynamics with um, minimal effort and um, absolutely zero commitment for years, for years, they're able to do this, okay? You'll have a situation go on for two to five years if you let it. You turn around, you're so confused. You're thinking, obviously, this guy likes me. Like, what's the big deal? Because obviously, he likes coming to me. And then you're bonding with someone, and it's the glue that's confusing you because you're thinking that you, he's just, he's just running away from his feelings. That's all that he's doing. No, because a man that truly wants you is not going to want anyone to stake a claim on you. The fact that he doesn't care if someone takes a claim on you, he's confused about whether or not he uh, wants someone to take a claim on you tells you all that you need to know. So what are you attached to? You're attached to the idea that you've curated in your head, the outcome that you are wishful and wanting. You're attached to the hope. You have to release your emotions and 
do it in a way that like write down a list. What makes you feel good? I love saving those lists to my phone. What releases dopamine? What releases oxytocin? What releases serotonin? Da, 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 da. I like curating lists like that. I like reading lists like that because those things really work. And one thing I love is a little science. I love a little science in my life. Physical activity really does help you with detaching. How, Aisha? How? Well, you have to have a healthy outlet. And when I say physical activity, get your mind out of the gutter. That is not what I'm talking about. Go to the gym. I know everyone says, go to the gym. Write it down in a journal. Do all these things. No, but that's because it actually works, guys. Let me tell you guys a little secret. I'm not even going to sit here and waste your time. All these, all the advice you get from me, you get from the next YouTuber, da, 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 it all works. It all works. I'm letting you know that right now. I write an ebook. It'll work if you follow my direction. I have my own planner out. It'll work if you follow the prompts. Everything works that is for your higher good, right? When you're engaging in activities like that, it's only up to you whether or not you're going to make it work. Hmm. It's interesting that we like to make things work with other people, but we don't like to make them work for ourselves. I don't know. That's just an interesting data point. Anyways, it's important for you to have a healthy outlet, right? So that you are feeling fulfilled in your life when it comes to detaching from somebody. Because in the beginning, it's going to be rough, rough, rough. Okay. It absolutely will be because you're so used to what you want. You're so used to the fact that you were once with this person. Now there's nothing more degrading feeling than you were just with somebody and then you turn around and it's like the next day you're a complete stranger. They're ignoring your text messages when you're writing them. They're viewing your stories and you're thinking, oh, maybe it's because they don't hate me that much, but no, they really just don't care about you. Let's stop reading into things and giving them meaning that they actually don't even have. This guy does not care, like in any capacity. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Him following you on Instagram, he doesn't hate you enough to literally unfriend you or like block you. He's simply indifferent. And that within itself is an answer. And it's so easy to look at that and be like, obviously he doesn't hate me because he's still following me. And I'm here to tell you and break that little bubble, babe, that it's just because he doesn't care enough, like near enough. Like you didn't even really make a dent. So for him, it's like, so what if I follow her? Like, doesn't really matter. And because things ended so mm, weird or like they just a cliffhanger, so to speak, he can now roll back on in limping. OK. And hey, uh, is your brain still working? You, you, you want to meet up? Let's meet up for lunch. And then the last thing you should be doing is giving him that chance, because that's where you will make the biggest mistake. I remember I dated this guy and he disrespected me. Do you guys remember Mr. Lawyer? Him. Hi, if you're watching this, I'm still doing well. Yeah, he, when I found pantyhose on the floor, he decided to ask me if I wanted any tea or coffee before I left because he obviously felt so embarrassed and weird. But then I decided to not speak to him and I didn't speak to him for like oh, five months. He then, I get a notification that he like screenshotted something that I put on Snapchat and I was so irritated by it because I'm like, first of all, I didn't even know you had a Snapchat. Two, like, why are you screenshotting my photos? And he then proceeded to start a mini argument with me telling me that I, in fact, sent him a Snapchat photo in which I did not because I did not even know he had a Snapchat. So then he proceeded to make light of how the situation ended and then said, hey, why don't we just go to dinner? Slippery slope, ladies. So I saw red. I thought, yeah, um, I hate you. So do I want to go to dinner? Yeah. And now I'm going to try and get a little revenge on you. Whole thing blew up in my face, like uh, almost immediately. Never worth it. Never did it again. Never did anything remotely like it again. Worst decision of my life. Um, besides talking to him, um, <laughs> that was mean, but like kind of, sort of, I don't know. <laughs> he hooked me back in because he was choosing, like he was taking all the bullets that I was giving him. Like, I was not being nice. Like, I'm a tough cookie. And he was like, listen, like, I know you hate me, but I just like, let's just do dinner. Like, let's reconcile. I feel so bad about this. And I'm thinking like, I don't believe anything you're saying. Like, I want to get over on you. You know what I mean? And 
Yeah, I mean, it just, it, it was a toxic dynamic. Once trust is broken, it's like a mirror. No matter how many times or how well you put it back together, baby, it's just, it's fractured. And you can see all the cracks in the foundation. It's over. Now, I also want to say on that note, we're getting a little bit off topic here, but hey, you're, you're, you're good, right? You're good on time. Okay, cool. I feel like when it comes to certain tricky situations, it is so important to assess whether or not you're going to get over it. If you choose to get over something, you don't get to bring it back up in that person's face. You either never bring it up again after you have that one discussion or you just leave. Those are your two options. Okay, back to what I was saying. Moving your body is so important when it comes to detachment because you need to get those emotions out of you. Like you ever like dance it out or is that just me? Like you just dance it out, you twerk it out, whatever you have to do, you get it done. Because when you move your body, not only are you scientifically releasing in, you know, chemicals, like feel good chemicals, endorphins, all these different things, but you're also so focused on like trying to catch the choreography, <laughs> ideally, that you're not thinking about what just happened. So you want to create more moments like that. Okay, dancing, walking, running. I promise you it's gonna redirect your focus because you can only think about what's currently grabbing your attention in that current moment. Now, when it comes to detaching from toxic dynamics, I wanna briefly talk about this. You need to absolutely avoid intimacy with Mr. Big over there because you won't have a fighting chance if you think that, oh, I, I mean, I, it doesn't really matter to me. Like, we're not even like anything anyways, but like, I'm still just going to go over there. You know what I mean? You're only hurting yourself. Like I said, it's science. I talked about this in a podcast episode. What are the chemicals that we release when we are bonding with a guy? We are releasing oxytocin. It's a bonding chemical for us. It is beyond your control. It is literally science. So why would you put yourself in this predicament when you should know what the outcome is going to be. Do you think you're really going to get over this guy by getting under the same guy that literally hurt you? When you think about how disrespectful that is to yourself, and listen, like it's a part, of, it's a rite of passage of life where we tend to participate in activities that are a little disrespectful to ourselves. I'm not even gonna say or lie. But after a while, if you're over the age of 25, like I always say, okay, it's giving prefrontal cortex activity, okay? Okay, once that frontal lobe is fully developed, baby, it's time to get the Gerber plan and grow up, okay? G grow up. No, seriously, because some of us are in our 30s and still engaging in toxic behaviors and you know what I mean? I had someone ask me at one point, well, how did you, how did you get over this situation? Like, you're not concerned if whether or not he's gonna go, like he's, what he's doing with the next chick? I'm not, no, I'm not. Does that mean I necessarily want it thrown in my face? No, not necessarily. But like, when you choose to move on from somebody, you have moved on from that person. You're not concerned with whether or not you know, they're with this, you should not be. Because when you set someone free, you set them free. If you, someone has to call it here. If you realize this dynamic is too toxic, it's not making any sense, what are you gonna do? Drag your, you guys, you know, drag yourselves through like misery for the rest of your lives? It's so important also when it comes to leaving toxic dynamics to not drown yourself in any sort of numbing devices. How are you gonna detach when your version of it's of detaching is literally drinking th two bottles of wine a day and and having like you know 12 beers and um and getting you know twisted off that henny numbing type of activities such as alcohol or excessive drinking i don't want to say alcohol but excessive drinking and partying they don't do anything good for you because your problems are still going to be there when you wake up it is a temporary fix to a larger problem. Your behavior is symptomatic of a larger problem. Aren't you tired of like faking the funk? You should be. It's a problem for a solution, okay? And we want solutions for problems, not problems for solutions, okay? It's all about having resilience when it comes to detachment. Mastering the art of detachment is about resilience. It is about eye on the prize and you're the prize all eyes on you, okay? You need to understand that reality and take it straight to the head. Like you do that tequila, how about that? When it comes to toxic dynamics, I also want you guys to understand 
that you cannot detach by being angry or casting any sort of blame. Because detachment is essentially the absence of prejudice or bias, okay? And also the opposite of love is not hatred, it's indifference. Eh, I don't really care if it does. Hate really is a passion thing. When you hate something, you're passionate about it. But when you're indifferent, it's like, meh, I really don't care. And I I mean that, I I really don't care. That is what you want to reach. You want to reach indifference when it comes to detachment. In conclusion, angels, the more that you focus on other people, what they're doing in their lives, you're hate watching people. You're so attached to every outcome that you are, you're not focused on yourself. And when was the last time that you wrote something in your journal that you even asked yourself, what can I do today to have a good day? When was the last time that you asked yourself, hmm, what are three things that I'm grateful for today? When was the last time that you just took a walk by yourself and you're not like, absorbing toxic or negative energy. Some of you also need a little bit of a reality TV show cleanse, okay? You must think that you live in a reality TV show. You 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 don't. You need to face reality and understand your reality and understand your current circumstances and say, "Listen, it's time for me to get my life together. I need to stop attaching myself to people that don't mean me well. I need to make sure that I'm doing the best that I can in my life. I need to make sure that I'm present, that I'm doing what I need to do to fulfill my life. I'm in control of my life. I'm in the driver's seat. It's going to go how I say it's going to go. Okay. That's what you need to tell yourself. Don't let people step into your life and rob you of, and, and relinquish your power and letting people rob you of your peace. Because at certain points, No one's going to be buying it anymore. It's no longer an excuse. It is, okay, girl, now we're looking at you crazy. Why are you doing this? But you're complaining over the same thing, but you're not doing anything about it. We don't want to hear about what you're not doing, what you're sick of, if you're not willing to help yourself. We want to see effort of you helping yourself. And the older that you become, you start to have less, you know, sympathy for things like that because you understand, okay, listen, I know decisions are very difficult to make the older that we get in life. However, because things we, you know, we have marriages, we have relationships, we have kids involved, all these different things. But you have to understand where your power is and it is in your presence. Detaching is knowing that the power is in your present moment right now. What can you do right here and right now? And going and checking his page, going and checking on the girl that he's with is not going to bring you any peace. Stop agitating yourself. If your friends are calling you, hitting you up, talking about, you know, good, did you hear what so-and-so did? Did you hear that? Just say, hey, like, I really don't want to hear that. I, I understand you think you're helping me, but you're really not. And I just don't want to hear about it because you could be living a fine and having an amazing day. And, and just someone mentioning something to you can just trigger you and send you on a spiral. Detach. Another thing I want to mention before we wrap up is detach also from wanting certain outcomes for people that you care about. You are not their guardian. You are not their, you know, you're not the judge and jury. You're not the word according to God. I don't know if I, so if no one ever told you, I'm here to tell you. You are not the word according to God, okay? So you don't get to, oh, I want this so bad for my friend that now your friend probably feels bad telling you anything. They're hiding things from you because they feel like you're going to judge them. Nobody can judge anyone's circumstance. The same way you may think, oh, I would never tolerate something like that is the same way that the way that that man speaks to you, your friend wouldn't tolerate either. So watch it. So you need to detach yourself from wanting certain outcomes like that because at the end of the day, The more people want to control other people just shows a lack of self-control within themselves. That's what it boils down to. When you have your own life intact and you're really focused on being your best self and the best version of you, you could care less for what everybody else is doing because you're so focused on project you. Do you understand that? Okay. So with that being said, angels, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video was thought provoking for you. I hope that it helped you. Like I said, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. I have a podcast that comes out every single Wednesday. It is visual now. Quality Pink Control is visual. We have so many good things in store because I have a studio now. And yeah, like I'm going to be very seldom filming in my room. I'm still going to have my room videos, you know, like my little personal one-on-ones with you guys. Also, I am going to be offering 
video consults and coaching where you guys get to speak to me one-on-one -on -one, and you guys can also book a package of coaching sessions with me that will take place over the duration of two to three months just so that we really get to work with each other one-on-one -on -one, and I can really help you make a long lasting difference in your life and I will have worksheets for you guys to work on. It's it's super fun. I'm so excited to have that service for you guys. It's just a better way for us to have a more closer knit relationship, especially because I know there are so many of you that say like you wish that you could meet me, all these different things. And now we actually get to be friends in real life. So I think it's a really good idea. Um, the feedback that I've gotten on my broadcast channel has been super amazing because I did mention it to them first. So if you guys want to know some like intimate details, things that I don't share yet to like the public, join my, my broadcasting uh, channel on Instagram. And yeah, with that being said, do not forget that I love you and God loves you and I'll speak to you beautiful angels in my next video. Mwah.